to NPR, Northampton Poetry Radio, with our erstwhile poet laureate, Rich Michelson. Rich, the microphone is yours, and you have two very special guests, and it's so cool. We're trying to figure out how to segue here from that wonderful news. Uh, that Bill started the program with uh, <laughs> politics, and uh, but but poetry uh, is going to take back the language, take back forever. You know, my guests today, Martina Spada and Paul Mariani. Um, Martin has a reading at UMass this Thursday night, November eighth at eight p.m. at Memorial Hall. Be there. Um, you're gonna. Uh, we're gonna. We're gonna take back the language. We're gonna take back the country. And uh, Martin just asked if, uh, if the word piss was acceptable in one of his poems. Um, I, I don't know what the answer was. It's here. always good to lead but, with but, that, but the problem, Instead of just let it go well, under the radar on, in the midst on. of a poem. The problem Have you ever is, heard of the concept of spoiler? No, no. I, no, I, 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 want to, I want to talk about that's okay. What I don't like in your poem is the word Trump. So that's, what, that's where we should cut out. Um, and uh, Monty, and how did these guys get in the studio? I, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mariani, Friday, 6 p.m. at R. Michelson Galleries. We are going to celebrate your life, your poetry. I mean, uh, seriously, people show up, uh, celebrate poetry, celebrate Paul. You've been so important to so many poets in this area. Um, and we are hoping to give back a little bit. Uh, we're going to have you read, Martine is going to read, I'm going to read, Lauren Schmidt, Suzanne Matson, Marina Goldman, um, and uh, we're going to have some music by your friend and my friend, Stephen Schoenberg, uh, who um, created uh, Put Your Work to Music. Uh, what was, uh, tell us about that piece that Stephen did with you. Actually, before you start. Yeah. Why don't you, Rich Michelson, tell our listeners who say, okay, kind of heard of these guys, who are they? Paul Marinari honey, and uh, Rich and Rich you, Michelson. You we, have an educated audience here, Bill. I know, but everybody in this knows, audience has everyone heard of knows Paul Mar- Mariani and, 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 and Martina Spada. But a minute, okay, all right. In, in, in a sh- in a short, so Paul Mariani, the author of eighteen books, seven volumes of poetry, certainly the most important biographer uh, of our time of poets, uh, John Berryman, Robert Lowell, Hart Crane, Gerard Manley Hopkins, William Carlos Williams, most recently Wallace Stevens, uh, so important as a biographer that to my mind, um, your poetry has taken a second step to that, and what I think we need to do is to flip that, because you really are one of the most important poets of your generation, of my generation. And uh, this is what happens when you're so good at something else and nobody else does that kind of biography. But Paul is certainly the, um, you know, one of the premier poets of his generation. Uh, You're going to hear a poem in a moment. Martina Spada. um, We've run out of adjectives. We've run run out of adjectives. (laughs) We've we've run out of time to talk about what, um, what what awards Martin hasn't won. But most recently, um, from Poetry Foundation, Poetry Magazine, he won the 2018 Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize. Uh, For those people not in the poetry orbit, that is a big deal. Comes with uh, a little money. Martin's going to take us out to breakfast afterwards, Paul. Is that good? (laughs) Okay. Um, But uh, Martin uh, has um, has just about uh, a Pulitzer Prize finalist. Uh, a Guggenheim Fellowship. Uh, his work has been banned in Tucson. This is how important this fella is. Um, our premier p- uh, political poet, I think. And, and Martina Spada teaches at UMass. He Amherst teaches at UMass, and where Paul Mariani used to teach okay. uh, before he moved to Boston College. And um, let's get some poetry on here, too, to get people a sense of what they're going to hear. And again, Martina um, Spada will be at Memorial Hall November 8th. November 8th at 8, 8, 8 p.m., Memorial Hall at UMass. And, and, pa- and Paul and the celebration will be at R. Michelson Gallery. At R. Michelson Gallery, Friday, Galleries, at, Friday at 6 p.m. Um, so mark your calendars. You're going to have a busy Thursday, Friday of poetry. So, uh, you know, and hopefully it'll be a celebratory um, you know, Thursday and Friday of poetry. Right, I, I, I like the, actually the, I don't know if you saw it, the uh, tagline on the column I had in the Daily Hampshire Gazette today, uh, the, on Saturday it had, uh, there's a piece I wrote about 
the elections and voter suppression and the tagline instead of saying, you know, Bill Newman's a lawyer and he, you can contact him at gazettenet.com. It says, Bill Newman's a lawyer and he's going to have his book reading and a book launch on Wednesday evening at the Broadside Bookshop in Northampton. Seven o'clock, it will either be a celebration or a wake. <laughs> <laughs> One so, or the other, uh, depending on Tuesday. So there you have it. Um, mm. But, you know, uh, let me tell you, no matter what happens, the poetry of both these gentlemen is going <coughs> to outlast and uh, be read for uh, years and uh, years and years into the future when we forget um, what most of this political uh, jargon is. So, uh, Martin, you're reading first. You're reading on uh, Thursday evening. Let's jump right in with a poem. Yes. Uh, well, we all heard uh, <coughs> what uh, Bill had to say about voter suppression, and uh, we heard Bill reading from the Krugman article, um, which only underlines the utter uh, seriousness, the high stakes of, of the election today. Um, and uh, with that in mind, I'm also thinking about the tactics of Donald Trump uh, to basically, in the days immediately before the election, um, decide to focus on um, the worst of the worst, decide to, to become uh, even more openly the racist demagogue that he is. And, of course, this is nothing new. Um, I, uh, thinking about the way he characterizes the caravan um, and um, terrorizes his base at the same time, I go back three years before Donald Trump was elected president to the first hate crime committed in the name of Donald Trump. Um, it didn't happen in Mississippi, and it didn't happen in Alabama, and it didn't happen in Georgia. It happened in Boston. Um, and it involved two uh, brothers on their way home from a Red Sox game encountering a homeless Mexican immigrant. Um, and the poem relays what happened next. Um, the epigraph comes from uh, the notorious press conference where Donald Trump announced his candidacy. This is where it all began, and now it's coming full circle. Um, so uh, this is a poem about that. It's also a poem about Donald Trump's idea of hell. Not for him the fiery lake of the false prophet, epigraph. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Donald Trump. June 16th, 2015. They woke him up by pissing in his face. He opened his mouth to scream in Spanish, so his mouth became a urinal at the ballpark. Scott and Steve, the leader brothers, celebrating a night at Fenway where the Sox beat the Indians and a rookie named Rodriguez spun the scenes on his changeup to hypnotize the tribe. Later that night, Steve urinated on the door of his cell, and Scott told the cops why they did it. Donald Trump was right. All these illegals need to be deported. He was a Mexican in a sleeping bag outside JFK Station on a night in August, so they called him a wetback and emptied their bladders in his hair. In court, the lawyer spoke his name, Guillermo Rodriguez, immigrant with papers, crop picker in the fields, trader of bottles and cans collected in his cart. Two strangers squashed the cartilage in his nose like a can drained of beer. In dreams, he would remember the shoes digging into his rib cage. the pole raked repeatedly across his cheekbones and upraised knuckles, the high five over his body. Donald Trump was right, said Scott. And Trump said, the people that are following me are very passionate. His hands fluttered as he spoke, a demagogue's hands, no blood under the fingernails, no whiff of urine to scrub away. He would orchestrate the chant to build that wall at rally after rally, bellowing till the blood rushed to his face, red as a demagogue in the grip of masturbatory dreams. A tribute to the new conquistador, the wall raised up by Mexican hands, Mexican hair and fingernails bristling in the brick, Mexican blood swirling in the cement like raspberry syrup on a vanilla sundae. On the Cinco de Mayo, he leered over a taco bowl at Trump Tower. Not for him, 
the fiery lake of the false prophet reddening his ruddy face. Not for him the devils of Puritan imagination, shrieking in a foreign tongue and climbing in the window like the immigrant demons he conjures for the crowd. Not even for him ten thousand years of the leader brothers streaming a fountain of piss in his face as he sputters forever. For him, hell is a country where the man in a hard hat paving the road to JFK station sees Guillermo and dials 911. Hell is a country where EMTs kneel to wrap a blanket around the shivering shoulders of Guillermo and wipe his face clean. Hell is a country where the nurse at the emergency room hangs a morphine drip for Guillermo so he can go back to sleep. Two thousand miles away, someone leaves a trail of water bottles in the desert for the border crossing of the next Guillermo. We smuggle ourselves across the border of a demagogue's dreams. Confederate generals on horseback tumble one by one into the fiery lake of false prophets. Into the fiery lake crumbles the demolished wall. Thousands stand, sledgehammers in hand to await the bullhorns and handcuffs await the trembling revolvers. In the full moon of the flashlight, every face interrogates the interrogator. In the full moon of the flashlight, every face is the face of Guillermo. Martin you are listening will to be. NPR, Northampton Poetry Radio, on the Bill Newman Show. My guests are Martina Spada. And Paul Mariani. And we uh, should Martin, have both Martin will be reading. It will be reading on uh, November 8th. That's this Thursday at 8 p.m. at Memorial Hall. Uh, you can also hear Martin on November 9th at 6 p.m. at R. Michelson Galleries, where he will be joining myself and other poets in a celebration of Paul Mariani. Um, please be there. Uh, the poem you just heard is in this month's uh, issue of Poetry Magazine, uh, where there's a, uh, a group of poems by Martin uh, and uh, his 2008 Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize section. Um, Paul. Share. Yes. Wow, Martin, thank you so much for that powerful, powerful poem. Uh, whew. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read a poem uh, uh, which I wrote last month uh, about my mother uh, who passed away back in 1988, uh, and she always loved monarch butterflies, so I saw a monarch butterfly out in the decaying garden. This is the poem. It's called The Distant Purple. Mid-September, dear woman, and the monarch lights once more upon the purple panoplied butterfly bush in the now decaying garden as it has for these past 30 Septembers. And once again, like the softest breeze, I feel your gentle presence and lift my open hand toward it, toward you, hoping for a sign, me, your firstborn, who never seemed to have the time while you were still with us. My hand unfolds, the monarch hovering, before it turns to float across the garden to another bush to settle there instead. And still I wait, wondering if it, if you, might rise from the distant purple and return here by my open, trembling hand and settle, if only for a moment, dear woman, before you lift and travel to some distant land as monarchs will. How you love butterflies. So much so I had one etched on your gravestone when you left us that September, having given us all you had before the cancer took you took you, oh, too soon. Remember that final phone call, your voice already tired, when I said I'd be there? I said, I said. 
Then driving north through the rain-soaked night, Getting lost and more lost as on we drove, Then through the door too late. Stay now, mother. Stay just a little longer before you're off again, bound for some other place called home. Paul Mariani, this is what poetry can do. It can give us back our language. It can give us back our humanity. It can touch us in the hearts and the minds. Uh, vote today. Join us on Thursday at 8 p.m. at Memorial Hall, November 8th. And join us at 6 p.m. at R. Michelson Galleries on November 9th. Uh, you will hear Martina Spada um, on the 8th. You'll hear Martina Spada with Doug Anderson, Lauren Schmidt, Suzanne Matson, Marina Goldberg. Uh, music by Stephen Schoenberg. And a exhibit of wood engravings by Barry Mosier, um, one of our great artists of Amen. this area and uh, who also uh, illustrated many of, my books. many of your books yes. uh, the fir your first book yes, the cover of your recent your most recent book epitaphs for the journey yes um, it's going to be a great celebration yeah. regardless and remember wednesday night too thank you Bill Rich. Newman thank you all at the broadside you've been listening to <laughs> northampton poetry radio mm -hmm.